Okay, I'm back. Now, time to turn to a little bit of my favorite YouTuber, that chapter. This story really hit home for me, and I do not know why. It's just something about it just never sat right with me. And then, I know it's right now, I'll, I'll tell you after he goes through the story, and you can hear it for yourself, and then I'll narrate over that, because some news has come out after he posted this and this news just came out like a week ago and since we're so close to utah we get some of the big you know news you know from utah or whatever just like when uh, that gabby patel and dude who did all that awful shit that whole story it was a denver fbi that led the investigation so we get a lot of their news you know when they're big stories but uh yeah for some reason the story just bothered me, so here we go. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, let me tell you the story of, of a book, right? And the, the inspiration, you know, behind that book. The title is, Are You With Me? And it's a book for kiddos, you know, dealing with grief, when someone close, a parent maybe, sadly passes away. It's also got what might be one of the most unintentionally hilarious covers ever. But if you're thinking, you know, what a lovely tale. Think again, because maybe the story behind this book used some very real inspiration that the author, like, created. This story, it's still ongoing. So, you know, we got the allegedly's, you know, and the accused of's, but if even half of it is true, big yikes. So let's give it a go. So this story takes us to Utah. I mean, wow. I just can't believe it. <laughs> In northern That's Utah awesome. lies the town of Camas, a small little rinky-dink town. The kind of place where, after saying the name, you quickly run out of things to say about it. Though I guess you can now add to that, Corey Richens lived there. It's host to about two and a half thousand people, generally safe. And it's in a beautiful part of the state. Though, I mean, like, from what I've seen of Utah, it seems like the whole state is, like, a beautiful part of this. I wouldn't kick it out a bit for fart. <laughs> Anyways, I'm quickly running out of... <laughs> That's why he's my favorite YouTuber, man. This dude's wits are, like, on another level. My God, that's just the way he his line delivery is freaking hilarious. And it's in a beautiful part of the state. Though, I mean, like, from what I've seen of Utah, it seems like the whole state is, like, a beautiful part of this. I wouldn't kick it out of bed for fun. <laughs> Anyways, I'm quickly running out of things to say. Colorado's more beautiful, by the way. So let's get to its most recent, or maybe only, claim to fame that the Richens family lived there. The Richens family were made up of Eric Richens, 39 years of age, his wife of nine years, if you can believe that, Corey, 33, and together Eric and Corey had three children. This shit was written for me clearly. All oh, boys, you got your Carter, your Ashton, and your Weston. Eric Richens was born in 1982 to parents Jean and Linda. Damn. Born in Bountiful, that's the name, though perhaps the adjective to Utah. Growing up, it was all about hunting. Eric Madford, he would even take trips to Africa, Mexico, Canada to hunt and bring back trophies. He was a very family-oriented guy, and he was always helping out on the Richens Ranch. He was always happy to get stuck in, and then after heading to the University of Utah, he went on to create his own masonry beeswax, which by all accounts, doing well. Though mainly he was known as a fellow who was, you know, he was full of life, he was always out there, and he was a real people person. Eric, he had been married uh, once before to, to a woman named Julie. They married in 2005, though sadly, uh, Julie would pass away in 2011. She was sat in a, like a fiery car crash ah, when she terrible. was rear-ended by a pickup truck while she was sitting at, at a red light. That's terrible. And so his second wife was Corey Richens. Eric and Corey married in 2013. Born Corey Darden, she was from Utah also, and herself she worked as a realtor. Hadn't always though, after getting a BS in healthcare admin, followed by a master's in human resources, she worked as an enhanced patient services and specialty clinic trainer, and later as an admin assistant in the Park City Hospital. She was always a bit of a go-getter though, uh, in 2010 she, uh, she, created, uh, she registered Corey Darden a Housekeeping Services Limited, a house, housekeeping uh, company. 
And then she went on to create her own realty company, K. Richens Realty, which she ran out of her Park City offices. McMansion's her speciality. Park City, by the way, was like a 20 minute drive from the Richens home in Cannes. So by all accounts, you know, other, like, other than those, like, actually within the marriage, things were great. They were grand. They were grand. Corey, the love of Eric's life, and they owned numerous properties together. As you can see in the pics, they seemed pretty happy, happy together, happy family life, the five of them all together. Uh, also taking what might be the worst, but probably funniest, weirdly airbrushed pics together. And they would be happier still, come March 2022, when Eric and Corey, uh, they were about to buy this new big ass mansion together. This one, whoa. The most mcmansion -y of McMansions, it broke ground in 2017, but at the time of purchase, it was still unfinished. Two million big ones was the price tag, with the idea being a flipperoo and collecting a nice chunk of change. Locals though were complaining about the house, calling it an eyesore and giving out that it disrupted the natural beauty of the area. Honestly, they're bang on the money. It looks like shit. But then, of course, tragedy struck on the 4th of March, 2022. At 3.22am, Summit County Sheriff's deputies and emergency personnel responded to a 911 call from 282 Willow Court, Summit County, home of the Richens. Corey had called, saying she had found Eric unresponsive at, at the foot of the bed. When, when, you know, the ENTs and all that, they arrived, they did, they did everything they could. But Eric, he was gone. Sadly, Eric Richens would pass away right there and then in the bedroom of, of his own house. You know, um, how? Why? What happened? Well, Corey would tell the police that the night before, her and Eric were celebrating the closing of that new house. And at one point, Corey, she made a nice Moscow mule for Eric. She went and she gave it to him. Eric, sipping away in it while he was sitting on their bed. Probably, uh, though, Eric should have just had a glass of water, you know, or, or something, because, spoiler alert, this would not be the first time Corey made Eric, uh, you know, a drink, uh, a, a drink with a wink. Oh, and speaking of so the next part is just uh, an advertisement, so I'm going to skip right through it. Where were we? So, Corey made a Moscow mule for her husband, Eric. He was drinking it in bed, and then Corey went into one of her son's bedrooms. Her son at the time was having night, night terrors, couldn't sleep, so Corey went in to read a kid's book, and she eventually fell asleep in her son's bedroom, waking up at 3 a.m., walking into her, you know, the bedroom she shared with her husband, and finding Eric there, at the bottom of the bed. Now how did a healthy man, 39 years of age, suddenly die? Well, an autopsy and toxicology examination were done and they found he had died of an overdose of fentanyl. He had five times the lethal dose in him. Mad shit. And it was like... Do me a favor, guys. Like... That shit... I heard, and I'm not. I'm not even gonna like repeat the whole story, but it's extremely fucked up. If you're in pain, if you have chronic pain, whatever, do not turn toward. I know you guys are smart. Do not turn towards anybody selling that shit. I've seen some scary videos on here of a cop, just like going through some stuff in just the tiniest amount like micrograms of it just like kind of flew up and the body cam footage of his uh, fellow officer you know is administering Narcan which uh, reverses the effects of an overdose and the whole time you just see him 
And that just, it's so scary, man. Like, yeah, I, I, why they make that, I mean, I know from what I've heard, it's coming from China through Mexico and, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just terrible. So that's awful. And I think that's what bothered me when I heard this, just because of, you know, something and someone close to me with the fentanyl incident, like, just don't do this. Yeah. It was the illegal kind of fentanyl, like it wasn't medication or anything like that. And it had all been orally consumed. Mm. Crazy though. You know, I guess he was, a, he was a secret addict. It's very, very, very strange. Those who knew him said, you know, they never saw him doing any drugs or heard him, you know, a Moscow mule would be the hardest thing he would have in his body. But hey, we got the silent killer. And the bad, the bad stuff is everywhere these days. You know, kids, we have a lot of fun on that chapter, but big news, drugs bad. And so Corey was left to pick up the pieces, raise her three boys by herself, to try and do the best she could. And she did on the one year anniversary of Eric's death in March 2023. She released a book about dealing with, with grief, about her, about her husband's passing, a book, you know, that was, that was for kids to help them, you know, uh, deal with, with, with tragedy. The blurb goes a little something like this. Are you with me? is written to create peace and comfort for children who have lost a loved one. It's to reassure children that although your loved one is not present, their presence always exists, and they walk through life with you as if they were here. The book did well, five stars. The reviews, lovely jubbly. She did it, she did publicity for it. You know, she's interviewed on ABC and Pure, all of that. and our three young children lost their husband and father unexpectedly. No doubt a very challenging time for all. And it was also the genesis for Corey to write a book to help other young families deal with death. She joins me now in the studio. Good morning. And so sorry to hear about your, your loss. No, thank you. I appreciate it very much. It's been a long, long year, difficult year. Um, and kind of writing this book has brought a little peace to me, to me and my boys. So. So take us back to last year. I mean, you, you've told me it's a, it's a rough go, and you felt a bit helpless as you were helping, trying mm -hmm. to, to get your kids to heal. Yes, exactly. So my husband passed away unexpectedly March 4th of last year. And, you know, as we were kind of going through the trials and navigation of different feelings and emotions, um, we, you know, kind of just sat and at the same time we were looking for different resources to help us like we've obviously never been through this my kids have never been through this so um you know nighttime readings are big for us and so we kind of started looking through barnes and noble and amazon and things that can kind of comfort you know us through the nights during you know and we just could not find anything that really was relevant for my kids and for our situation um and so you know we're just like well let's write our own yeah so not having read the book i mean is there some religious sense to there's it? not honestly it's i you know i'm not religious there's you know there's no religion if you've seen the cover and you hear the story you'll find out exactly why the book got as popular as it did you know as long as you believe in have i mean heaven right and afterlife then it it would be good for you um kind of the three main points that i have discovered, I guess, in the last year is um, connection, continuity, and care. So how are y'all doing? You guys, I mean, I guess you have good and bad days? It's good and bad days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some days you're like, okay, I got this. Like, we're okay, you know, and we can figure this out. And there's other days and it's like, what the heck? What am I doing? Like, I don't, I can't do this. Though most of Corey's publicity tour, um, I think was for the words, you know. You know, you know, you you know, you know, all you know when my you know, you know, you know, you know, and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Oh, what the? You know, you know, you know, you know. Um, you know it. You know, you know, you know, you know. Think especially with kids. You know, you know, you know, and you know, you know. You know, I have three kids. You know, let he. You know, kind of. You know, you know, you know. Especially my what his heart. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. 
So, or if it's a parent, a sibling, or a friend, talking about loss with kids can be a tricky subject. Joining us now is author of Are You With Me? Corey Richens to share her three C's to helping kids cope with grief. And Corey, I want to start with your story. What happened in your personal life? So my husband passed away unexpectedly last year. So it's March 4th was a one year anniversary for us. And um, he was 39, it completely took us all by shock. Um, and we have three little boys, 10, nine, and six. And um, you know, we kind of, my kids and I kind of wrote this book on the different emotions and grieving processes that we've experienced last year. And you know, hoping that it can kind of help other kids, you know, um, deal with this you know and of kind of, you know, find happiness some some way or another. I'm new to all of this, so kind of doing all, you know, research and reading books and things to try and understand, you know, not only how to grieve as a widow, as a, as a wife, but also, you know, with my kids, how to help them, how to help them understand what just happened. And um, what I have kind of found is, as I mentioned, it's kind of the three C's is how I has visualize it and it's, you know, um, connection, continuity, and care. There's a promotion right now. Get a free copy of the book April 30th and May 1st through Amazon Kindle. You are an amazing woman and mom, and thank we you. thank you for being vulnerable and sharing this and touching the lives of others. Thank you. I really appreciate being here. So, mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Corey. Thank you. And a second book, Mom, How Far Away Is Heaven? Was you out soon? You know, Corey. So no, no religious undertones. How far away is heaven? As long as you believe in heaven, that usually comes attached with some type of belief in religion. You're not, you're, you're just at that point parading to the masses because you know, now every time I say that word, I'm gonna feel dumb. Utah is, known for being extremely Mormon state that extremely religious. So it kind of took me by surprise when I heard the second book is called what it's called, but yet she has stayed adamant that, oh, it wasn't really religious. Like what? I, I don't get, I don't, get it like let me write a cookbook but it's not really about cooking it's just about foods that I like kind of like the same thing I guess I don't know he was gonna release and release a whole series she was gonna hoping there would be the next Harry Potter you know this would there would be one about about a, a little girl who lost who lost her mother or, or a child who lost their sibling basically make this entire big franchise of grief books and is that how this tale ends? Nope. One month after this interview, Corey Richens was arrested and charged with murder. What? According to unsealed court documents, autopsy reports revealed Eric died due to an overdose of fentanyl, five times the lethal dose. And it is believed his wife put it in a drink she gave him at home while having a Valentine's Day dinner. Reports also saying that Eric was suspicious of being poisoned and confided in a friend that he suspected his wife of poisoning him. Corey has now been booked into the Summit County Jail, and during her first court appearance today, the judge denied her release. Neighbors now saying they are stunned at this outcome and that the Richens were always a friendly couple. So yeah, big surprise. Almost as, as big of a surprise as the fact that she may not have actually kind of sort of written the book she was doing all this publicity for. It seems she used Book Writing Lane, which is a book writing service. From what I gather, you approach them with ideas and how you want the story to go and, and so on and so forth, and then they actually write the book itself, like ghostwriters or something. They also do the illustrations, marketing, etc. The reason I say this is because she uh, left a testimonial on the website, essentially saying, thanks for writing the book. These guys did an amazing job at taking what I wanted illustrated and my words and ideas for the book and bring it to life. Highly recommended. This was March 15th, 2023. The book was released 10 days earlier on March 5th, 2023, the one year anniversary of Eric's death. 
she clearly didn't feel uh, too bad. I mean, the husband she's accused of murdering, um, it looks like he's having a great time in heaven. Sure, she probably thought she was doing him a favor. So yeah, uh, let's get into it. What did the police learn in the one year from when Eric was found dead to the, to, to the, the following year when Corey was arrested? A lot, it seems, and the motive was good old money. And by that, you know what I mean. Love this. Two million books, pal, spread across four life insurance wow. policies, all taken out four? seemingly without Eric's knowledge. She also changed the life insurance policy, his own life insurance policy, the one he was aware of, to change the beneficiary from his company to her. The company uh, was notified and Eric changed it back. See, a few years before, while on vacation in Greece, Corey Richens made Eric a little drinky drink that made him violently ill. He, uh, Eric told this then to, to his sister and he told her uh, at the time, yeah, I think she tried to kill me. Then on Valentine's Day, 2022, so maybe two and a half weeks before his death, Corey made Eric a sandwich that he took one bite out of and was violently sick yet again. He had to... That's where I have a problem with this whole story. You have now two separate occasions where she is flat out giving you something and you tell your friends, I think she's trying to poison me, I think she's trying to kill me, yet you're still taking drinks, food, whatever, etc. from her. I mean, the dude must... I, I, who knows? I don't know what was going on in his head, but I mean, after the first, maybe the after, after the first time, okay, chalk that up to me, you know, you know, something bad or whatever. But the second time, and then you tell somebody, I think she's trying to kill me. Why in the world are you going to accept anything that this woman gives you? I have no clue to take an EpiPen to save his his life like he couldn't breathe. This time he told his business partner, yeah, I think my wife just tried to kill me and I think this is the second time she tried to do it. And then he changed his uh, the beneficiary in his will and also a power of attorney from Corey to his sister. He seemed pretty confident that Corey was gonna try and kill him for money and he was right. Eric also believed Corey was cheating on him and had been throughout wow. the marriage. Oh, I forgot about that. She's off banging someone else. She's changing your life insurance policy, uh, the beneficiary, to herself. She tried to kill you twice, and he's still... I, I mean, I, I think a sign saying your wife is trying to murder you would be less subtle than what was actually happening. Now, I hear you're barking, big dog. Eric clearly knew Corey was trying to kill him. Why did he stay in the marriage? I mean, she already tried twice, and third time is apparently the charm. Well, he simply didn't want his three sons to grow up in a broken home. End of story. He had contacted a divorce attorney about two years before, but he never went, went through with it. Money had long been the source of problems between Corey and Eric. In 2020, Eric learned that Corey had spent a quarter of a million dollars in their home equity, withdrawn another $100,000 from his bank account, and spent over $30,000 on his credit card. And by the way, the house they were buying Eric was not buying that, like that big mansion thing for two million. Eric was like, no, I'm not fucking buying that shit. He was refusing to pay for it. So I guess she kind of wanted him edit a picture for that also. She then, she successfully purchased the house the day after he died. And then two weeks later, she put it on the market again, flipping it. This time she's putting it on the market for $3.7 million. Wasted literally zero time. The police were in fact on to Corey pretty quickly because she is uh, an idiot. <laughs> The night Eric died, Corey's- Not that quickly. You're a year into it? I mean, come on. Most people would have been charged fucking ASAP within freaking a week. Like, oh my God, the story that I cannot hear is this. He wasn't from here, but they moved here. That Chris Watts fuck 
Mm. Like, he still had, what, a week? And, yeah, it was just, Jesus Christ. They gave her a year. I mean, for a man who never had any type of addiction issues from all the character witnesses that you bring forward, that is just some bullshit. So, yeah, they really... I mean, I can see the prosecutors really wanting to build a strong case against her, but... Wow. She said she went into her son's bedroom to read him a, you know, a children's storybook. She said she left her phone in the bedroom, in, in her bedroom. Uh, well, an analysis of her own phone would find out that it had been locked and unlocked many times with many texts sent and received, all of which were deleted. Corey also told the police when they and the, and the emergency services when they arrived that night that she tried to do CPR when she found Eric, you know, cold to the touch in the bedroom, um, but they didn't believe that to be true because they found Eric with blood in his mouth and there was no blood on Corey at all. See, what though really broke this case open was when the police contacted an acquaintance of Corey's, uh, a woman known only as C.L. C.L. is believed to be the person Corey bought the fentanyl from, the fentanyl she used to kill Eric. Tried to kill him a couple of times. C.L., she told the police that sometime between December 2021 and February 2022, Corey contacted them asking for some pain meds for an quote, investor, unquote. They gave Corey some meds. Two weeks later, Corey contacted them uh, them again, asking for some from, for some stronger stuff. Some, uh, quote, this is literally what she said, some Michael Jackson stuff. What, kids? Corey, for $900, <laughs> received between... <clears throat> I never got that before. Oh my God. <laughs> for some stronger stuff. Some, uh, quote, this is literally what she said, some Michael Jackson stuff. What, kids? Corey, for $900, <laughs> received between 15 and 30 pills of fentanyl. Oh my After god. After Corey received that, three days later was Valentine's Day when Eric took a bite of a sandwich and was violently ill. Corey asked for more, paid another $900 for fentanyl pills. Six days after she got him, Eric was dead. Corey then, two days after Eric died, she called a locksmith over to the house to try and drill into a safe which she believed contained over a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know why this the bothers me The day he died, so she said they were celebrating closing the house. That's likely untrue. Eric's family would tell investigators that he had told her that very day he was not buying the house and she was being cut out of his will. Then, the day after he died, she closed on the deal. After Eric's death, Corey believed she was getting a nice little payout of about three and a half million dollars. No, she was not, because she wasn't aware that Eric had changed the will from, from her to his sister. So I can only imagine Corey's expressions, very, very funny, if you imagine what her expression was like when she learned she was cut out of his will, you know, with all the money, the life insurance, the, the, the houses, all his assets, all that type of shit. Very, very funny. But then, of course, <laughs> began a legal battle. She was disputing the will. Then, a year later, she was arrested and charged with murder. She is currently sitting in the Summit County Jail. She's so psychotic, it is like out of frame. She, it, she is so psychotic, it's, it's as out of this frame as she is out of her mind. What kind of stuff must be going through that sign piece of shit? she calls her brain is actually insane that she would murder her husband for life insurance and for all this money and then write a book about the grief she and her kids experienced when she's the one who killed him and uh, obviously uh, doesn't seem to give a shit kind of you know you know we, you know you know you know you know you know you know bit her mannerisms and stuff like that odd this story is just so insane i mean she's the kind of person to kill her husband then write a book about getting over the trauma. Now, I know that's exactly what she did, but how just truly batshit bananas this story is, can't be, can't be overstated. Thank you, Corey. Thank, Thank you. 
thank you so so much for watching uh this whole video I, I really really appreciate it um you know here the next whole video will be out in a couple of days and here before i go let me just sell my ass for a minute um if you're looking for more of that chapter please check out the patreon where for two bucks a month you get early access to videos there's also a, a patreon only playlist of videos uh, patreon only videos live streams that sort of thing uh check out the that chapter podcast for a lot of podcast only stories often told with me and a friend and um yeah Man, that kind of wraps it up, actually. It's more or less all I had to go to. Um, yeah, here, listen, I'll see you in a couple of days. But until then, as always, please look after each other. Please look after yourselves. Because I love you. My kid. Okay, I'm going to pull this up to see if it... I'm pulling it up from Colorado News. The new shit that just came out. And like I said, he released this prior to this news coming out. So, give me a minute here. So this has made such national headlines that I couldn't find it for the Denver News when I was looking it up, but that's where I seen it from. I just happened to click on this, and it's Good Morning America, national news. This idiot did this. Now to the Utah mother, accused of killing her husband and then writing a children's book about grief. Her case is back in court today, and she now sues her husband's estate. Kana Whitworth is here with more. Good morning, Kana. Hey, Michael. Good morning. A bit of a bizarre twist here. While she is behind bars, deemed a substantial threat to the community by the judge, new court documents show that Corey Richens is now seeking proceeds from their family home and her late husband's business. The case of the Utah mother accused of murdering her husband, then writing a children's book about grief, is back in court today. The hearing comes days after Corey Richens filed a lawsuit seeking millions from her late husband Eric's estate. Under the terms of the prenuptial agreement, uh, Corey stood to gain uh, certain assets uh, if they were to divorce, but she gained substantially more assets if he passed away while they were still married. Authorities say Corey Richens murdered her husband, Eric, by lacing his drink with a fatal dose of fentanyl back in March of 2022. Prosecutors and the family spokesperson, Greg Sidorkis, say it was not her first attempt to poison him. Is it your belief that Corey had been planning this? For years? Yes, absolutely, but no doubt in my mind. Prosecutors and Eric's family believe Corey was financially motivated to kill the father of their three children, Jesus a charge Christ. she denies. Being bad with money does not make you a murderer. Eric's family says Corey was stealing from him, and her questionable behavior is what motivated him to put one of his sisters in charge of his estate before he died. That includes the Richens' home and Eric's share of his masonry business valued at $2 million, which he owned prior to their marriage. Please do not allow Corey to hurt Eric's memory, our family, friends, and community anymore. We have been through enough. The couple's three sons now in the custody of a family friend. This, after family Corey's friend. book, illustrated ways to help them cope with the loss of their father. Well, my husband passed away unexpectedly last year, so it's March 4th was a one year anniversary for us and um, he was 39. It completely took us all by shock. Now, Corey will learn the next steps in her case this afternoon at a hearing. If convicted, she faces anywhere between 20 years in prison to the death penalty. And you guys, legal analysts tell me to no surprise that this murder case will be the priority. The civil suit will be on the back burner until it's resolved. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. Kana, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. Okay, I didn't like hearing that. A family friend. Your sister just gained all your legal assets, financial assets, and they're with a family friend. May, may, maybe, yeah, that kind of surprised me right there. I, I don't remember hearing that. But how much more guilty do you need to make yourself look? If you're suing against your estate before, more than likely, she's not going to get out of prison. Because like how Mike from that chapter said, this is all still allegedly. But, yeah. Doesn't, that is... I don't know what the hell her legal team is thinking. Why would they allow her to... I guess life's just crazy like that. Why would they allow her to even file this motion for the lawsuit against the estate? I mean... 
okay, if you win in trial and not get the death penalty or 20 years in prison, then go after it. But now, like, what is she going to gain while she is in jail? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. That just right there screamed guilt like none other. So, like I said, Mike released that, you know, this story far before this came out. When this came out, I thought like, damn, that that just makes her look even more guilty as shit. So, anyways, I hope you guys found this story disturbing like I did, but in a good way because this piece of shit deserves to be in prison for killing what seems to be a very good guy, you know, a good father. But like he said, like how much more of a sign do you need other than a freaking, I mean, it can't be subtle enough to have a sign saying, hey, look, your wife is trying to kill you. Granted, you don't want your children to grow up in a broken home, but you also don't want your children to grow up without a fucking parent. And then this chick cheating on him, supposedly, like, yeah. Anyways, guys, this I found, like I said, when I first heard this, I wanted to put this out for some time, but it's just disturbing to me. So... Like always, leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, might upload a couple more videos tonight. I have a very easy breezy day. I mean, night tonight. So yeah, no, nothing big on the radar. But yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. Anyways, I'm out.